Hey everyone, I'm here to review misplaced and dangling modifiers. I've gotten some emails and some comments on Google Classroom that there's been a struggle with modifiers. Um, I'd first like to say that it's really important that you go through all the videos when I post them. It really does help and give you some information. And sometimes it has practice in there, but it's also important that you go through the PowerPoint or the slideshow that was posted that will also help you a great deal. Misplaced and dangling modifiers are descriptors or they describe something that's in the sentence. However, if it's misplaced, it means it's in the wrong spot. And if it's dangling, it means there's nothing it's describing or nothing in the sentence that it can describe. So that means you need to add a subject so that it can describe someone or something. So let's start with number one. It says, Emma Sue was delighted when Mr. Nagayan returned her perfect calculus test with an ear to ear grin. Right now it says, with an ear to ear grin, and it's describing the calculus test. However, a calculus test cannot have an ear to ear grin. So we need to move that someplace else. And the hard part is we really don't know if it's describing Emma Sue or if it's describing Mr. Nagayan. Since it says Emma Sue was delighted, I'm going to assume that Mr. Nagayan was probably the person who had an ear to ear grin. So I'm going to move it uh, with an ear to ear grin. I'm going to move that in front of Mr. Nagayan. So this is how I would rewrite this sentence. With an ear to ear grin, comma, Mr. Nagayan returned the perfect calculus test to Emma Sue who was delighted. One thing I want to make very clear about rearranging sentences that have misplaced or dangling modifiers is there's more than one way you can write a sentence. Um, usually there's not just one correct answer. So if you were someone who read the sentence and thought that with an ear to ear grin better explained Emma Sue, you can also do it that way. So you would write it very similarly. You would say with an ear to ear grin, comma, Emma Sue was delighted when Mr. Nagayan returned her perfect calculus test, period. Make sure you have a period. I've actually noticed uh, when students have been typing some of their sentences in Google Classroom, not all of you have been typing a period. That's really important. That's just proper grammar. So please make sure you're typing your period. All right, let's go to our next sentence, sentence number two. It says, Scrubbing the tile grout with bleach and an old toothbrush, the mildew stains began to fade. So right now, our sentence is saying, scrubbing the tile grout with bleach and an old toothbrush is describing the mildew stains. However, mildew stains aren't scrubbing um, the tile grout. And that's the only other subject in the sentence, which means this is actually considered a dangling modifier. This one is dangling because, 
like I mentioned earlier, it does not have a subject in the sentence anywhere to describe. It's Think about it as if you're dangling off of a cliff and there's no one there to hold on to, you're going to fall. So you need to give this sentence or this modifier someone or something to hold on to in order to make the sentence make sense. Um, again, there's more than one way to do this. As long as you put the modifier closest to the subject, um, that's the best thing that you should do. So um, I'm gonna show you two different ways, of course. I'm going to pick a random name such as Michael. So let's start with number two as Michael scrubbed the tile grout with bleach and an old toothbrush the mildew stains began to fade. So in this sentence, I actually just put um, a subject right in front of where it says scrubbing, but you have another option as well. If you wanted to, you could actually add um, the subject toward the middle of the sentence. So I could say something like this. The mildew stains began to fade while Michael was scrubbing the tile grout with bleach and an old toothbrush. So if I put these two sentences next to each other, like this, you can see that um, they're not the same sentence, but they are the same sentence. As long as the modifier, which was scrubbing the tile grout with bleach and an old toothbrush actually has a subject to modify, um, then the sentence is good. And you can rearrange it as long as it still means the same thing. And both of these sentences, the way I wrote them, mean the same thing. So now we're gonna go to sentence number three. It says, to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline, the computer keyboard sang with Sylvia's flying fingers. So right now it says, to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline, the computer keyboard sang. Um, so right now it's saying that the computer keyboard is trying to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline, um, which the key computer keyboard can't do that. So that's one subject in here that's incorrect. The only other subject that's in here is fingers. It's the only other subject that's in this sentence. Are the fingers trying to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline? And some people say, yeah, the, the fingers are moving so it can finish by the 3 p.m. deadline. But then that would be like saying that the fingers were people and working on their own without a without an actual person attached to it. So this is actually considered a dangling modifier. It doesn't have a subject in this sentence currently to modify. So we have to add um, the person. The good news is they did tell you who the fingers belong to and that's Sylvia, which means we can use Sylvia as our subject. So what I would say is to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline. Sylvia made the computer keyboard 
sing with her flying fingers. Of course, like I've been showing you, this is not the only way we could rearrange this sentence. Um, as long as you're still putting Sylvia as the subject being modified, and the thing that's modifying it is to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline, she is the one who is trying to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline. It's important that we have Sylvia in there. Um, so another way to write this would be the computer keyboard sang with Sylvia's flying fingers because this is where I add my subject Sylvia needed to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline. Oops, all right. So as I keep mentioning, I'm going to continue mentioning, there is more than one way to rearrange this sentence. As long as what the meaning of the sentence, as long as the meaning of the sentence is still there, um, then your sentence is probably correct as long as the correct subject or words being modified and the sentence actually makes sense. All right, let's go to number four. Number four says, frosted with vanilla icing, Sheila watched Desmond stuff his mouth with a cupcake. Can you actually find the, in this case, misplaced modifier, which means there is um, a subject that should be modified. It's in the sentence currently, but the description's in the wrong spot. So can you find the incorrect description or the misplaced description or modifier? The misplaced modifier would be frosted with vanilla icing because right now it's saying that Sheila is frosted with vanilla icing and that is super weird. So that is not correct. Let's look at our other subject options. So right now it's saying Sheila is frosted. Would it be Desmond or would it be the cupcake that would be frosted with vanilla icing? I'm really hoping you said cupcake. If you did, good job. If you said Desmond, I'm kind of concerned for you. So we're going to rewrite this sentence um, one way that says, Sheila watched Desmond stuff his mouth with, you could say with a vanilla frosted cupcake, or um, you could have said Sheila watched Desmond stuff his mouth with a cupcake that was frosted with vanilla icing. Um, there are just, there are several ways you could have done that. You could have also said um, Sheila watched Desmond stuff his mouth with a cupcake frosted with vanilla icing. There are several ways, but I'm just going to go with um, Sheila watched Desmond stuff his mouth with a vanilla frosted cupcake. But I will show you one of the other examples just so you can see it if it helps. Sheila watched Desmond. stuff his mouth with a cupcake frosted with vanilla icing. And last but not least, I'm gonna go over number five in this video. It says, 
the parakeet watched Rocky the cat slink behind the living room sofa perched on the curtain rod. In this situation, there is a misplaced modifier like there was in number four, which means um, there is a modifier in here that's in the wrong spot. It's describing the wrong subject in this sentence. So first, let's see if you can figure out what the misplaced modifier is in the sentence. If you said perched on the curtain rod, you are correct. That is the misplaced modifier because right now it's describing what's closest, which is the sofa, and the sofa cannot be perched on the curtain rod. <clears throat> so then which other subject in the sentence could be perched on the curtain rod? <coughs> would it be the parakeet or the cat? Which would be on a curtain rod? If you chose parakeet, that is the correct answer. So one way you could rewrite this <coughs> is just to move this to the very front of the sentence. So I would say perched on the curtain rod the parakeet <coughs> watched Rocky the cat slink behind the living room sofa. I'm just going to give you that example for number five because um, that's just the easiest one and it makes a lot of sense. I'm sorry for the coughing. No, I don't have coronavirus. It's just a little tickle. So anyway, if you have any more questions, um, please feel free to email me or message me. I will be doing a second video for numbers six through ten.